वेलकम बैक एवरी वन लेट्स कॉन्टिन्यू विद पार्ट फोर ऑफ चैप्टर फाइव मल्टीपल्स एंड फैक्टर्स इन दिस ट्यूटोरियल वी विल लर्न फ्यू फैक्ट्स अबाउट प्राइम नंबर्स विल बी टॉकिंग ऑफ ट्विन प्राइम नंबर्स एंड को प्राइम नंबर्स विल बी लर्निंग डिफरेंट वेज टू फाइंड एच सी एफ एंड एल सी एम सो लेट्स स्टार्ट आर ट्यूटोरियल बाई लर्निंग फ्यू फैक्ट्स अबाउट प्राइम नंबर्स प्राइम नंबर्स यू हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड इन द प्रीवियस ट्यूटोरियल सो स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द स्मॉलेस्ट प्राइम नंबर टू इज़ द स्मॉलेस्ट प्राइम नंबर बिफोर टू वी डील विद द नंबर वन विच इज़ नीदर प्राइम नॉर कॉम्पोजिट वन इज अ यूनिक नंबर सो टू इज़ द स्मॉलेस्ट प्राइम नंबर टू इज ऑल्सो द ओनली इवन प्राइम नंबर ऑल द अदर इवन नंबर्स आर कॉम्पोजिट नंबर्स वाई बिकॉज इवन नंबर्स आर ऑलवेज डिविजिबल बाय टू सो दे हैव एट लीस्ट थ्री फैक्टर्स वन the number itself and 2 so all other even numbers are composite numbers except 2 so here this is a unique property about 2 that 2 is the only even prime number next is a two digit number can be prime only if digit in its ones place is 1 3 7 and 9 so from here we can have a hint that if we see one's place as 1 3 7 and 9 in a two digit number it can be a prime number these are few facts about prime numbers let's talk of two prime numbers now with having certain property so two prime numbers with a difference of 2 are called as twin prime numbers yes you heard it right if we take two prime numbers and if we subtract them and we get a difference of 2 they are called as twin prime numbers also there is a composite number between the twin prime numbers for example let's take two prime numbers say 11 and 13 the example in front of you 11 and 13 are two prime numbers in between 11 and 13 there is a number 12 which is composite right so between two twin prime numbers there is always a composite number so uh, second example in front of you is 59 and 61 both are prime numbers the difference between them is 2 and there is a composite number 60 in between them so it's very easy to uh, see or to find whether the two given prime numbers are twin primes or not so the first condition is that both the numbers should be prime numbers and the second condition is that their difference should be two now let's talk of two numbers which have only one as the common factor so in their factor list only one is the common number so such numbers are called as co prime numbers or we can say that two numbers whose hcf is 1 are called as co prime numbers so here we are talking about two numbers any two numbers not particularly about prime numbers so the name co prime numbers does not have any relationship with prime numbers it the numbers may be prime the numbers may not be prime here the main thing is that the hcf should be 1 or you can say since you have not studied about hcf right now their common factor should be only 1 no other number in their factor list should be common in between for example 5 and 9 5 is a prime number but 9 is not a prime number but if we see factors of 5 they are 1 and 5 factors of 9 are 1 3 and 9 so if you see the common factor so only 1 is the common factor so 5 and 9 can be called as co prime numbers similarly 8 and 15 do not have any common factor and 85 and 86 also do not have any common factor except 1 so the three examples in front of you are the examples of co prime numbers now let us discuss few properties about co prime numbers 
Co-prime numbers are, no, are not necessarily prime numbers. For example, 8 and 25. 8 and 25 are co-prime numbers because their HCF is 1. Their common factor is 1. But they are not prime numbers. So it is not mandatory that co-prime numbers should be prime numbers. The second property is any two consecutive numbers are always co-prime numbers. For example, 55 and 56. You can take any other example as well. Any two consecutive numbers are always co-primes. Third property is two prime numbers are always co-prime but two co-prime numbers need not be prime. For example, 2 and 3. So 2 and 3 are prime numbers. They will be always co-prime. Why? Because two prime numbers have common factor as one only. No other factor is common in between them. So two prime numbers are always co-prime. What is prime factorization? It is finding which prime numbers multiply together to make the original number. For example, I have 36. I have a number 36. So I will be finding prime numbers which when multiplied together makes 36. That is called as the prime factorization of 36. So there are two methods for prime factorization the first method is factor tree method and the second method is short division third factor tree method you have already studied in your pre previous classes in class 5 we'll be talking about short division method so let's start with the short division method for prime factorization so what is short division method in this we keep dividing the quotient by prime factors till we reach a prime number. So prime factors means prime numbers. They are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13 and so on. So we'll be selecting only prime numbers for prime factorization and we'll be dividing the quotient. Quotient is the number given in the question that is taken as the quotient. We keep dividing that quotient by the prime factors till we reach a prime number and then we write the numbers as the product. For example, 30. So the smallest prime number 2 divides 30. So we have taken 2 as the divisor and we are dividing 30 by 2. So 2 15s are 30. At the second step, I have 15 as the quotient. So I'll be dividing 15 by another prime factor. It is not divisible by 2. So we'll be dividing it by 3, which is the next prime number. So 3 5s are 15. So now I got quotient as 5. So we are writing quotient on the right hand side. And we are writing the prime factors on the left hand side. So I got a prime number 5 and here I stop. Now I express 30 as the product of its prime factors which is 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 5. So this is very easy short division method. Now let us discuss few examples, few more examples of short division method. So find the prime factorization of 75, 210 and 250. So in front of you are the two prime factorizations of 75 and 210. So the very first step here is selecting the prime number that divides the given number. So we have prime numbers 2, 3 and 5. The, we are starting from the smallest prime numbers. So 2 does not divide 75. But yes, 3 divides 75. So I started with 3. 3 into 25 is 75. So I got the quotient as 25. Now at the second step, 25 is not divisible by 3. So I selected the next prime number that is 5. 5 5s are 35. So in the quotient place, I got 5 and I stop here because 5 is a prime number. So we stop as soon as we get a prime number in the quotient. So 75 can be represented as 3 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 5. So this is the prime factorization of 75. Now let us see the next example 210. Since the unit place is 0, it is divisible by the prime number 2. So 2 multiplied by 105 
gives us 210 so i got the quotient as 105 so in the rough column you can divide 210 by 2 so that you can get the quotient as 105 so that work you can do in the rough side now 105 is not divisible by 2 because the last digit is neither 0 nor any even number so let us check it whether it is divisible by 3 or not so we are selecting these prime numbers on the basis of the divisibility rules that we have studied so 1 plus 0 plus 5 is 6 and 6 is divisible by 3 so 105 is also divisible by 3 so when i divide it selected the prime number 3 to divide 105 so you can again perform the division in the rough side so you will be getting 35 as the quotient now 35 again we have to check whether it is divisible by 3 or not so it is not divisible by 3 but it is divisible by the next prime number that is 5 so 5 7 are 35 now i got 7 in the place of quotient and 7 is a prime number so here we stop and 210 can be written as 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 7 so this is how we find out the prime factorization of 210 now let us see the next example 250 so 250 is divisible by 2 so let's start dividing it by 2 i got the quotient as 125 when i divide 250 by 2 now at the second step we have to think of a prime number which divides 125 so 3 the prime number 3 does not divide 125 the next prime number 5 divides 125 so i selected 5 so 5 multiplied by 25 is 125 i got the quotient as 25 at this step now at the third step again 5 divides 25 so 5 5 are 25 so i have written 5 below 25 as the quotient now at the place of quotient i got 5 and that is a prime number so here i stop so 250 can be written as 2 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 5 so this is the very easy short division method of prime factorization I hope the topic is clear to you and the examples that we just discussed are the questions of exercise 5.2 question number 10. So you can uh, consult these examples for solving the question number 10. Now let us discuss another question. Find the prime factorization of smallest three digit number. So the smallest three digit number is 100. So we have to prime factorize it. Starting from the smallest prime number 2, 2 divides 100 so 2 multiplied by 50 is 100 so 50 is the quotient at the second step 50 is again divisible by 2 so i again selected 2 as the divisor 2 multiplied by 25 is 50 so i got quotient as 25 now 25 is not divisible by 2 and it is not divisible by 3 as well so the next prime number is 5 so 5 divides 25 so 5 fives are 25 now i got i got 5 as the quotient and 5 is the prime number so i stop here so 100 can be represented as 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 5 so this is the prime factorization of the smallest three digit number so this particular question is question number 11 of the same exercise you can consult this question while you are solving question number 11 of exercise 5.2 our next topic is HCF. Now what is HCF? H stands for highest, C stands for common and F stands for factor. So HCF stands for highest common factor. So for uh, knowing the meaning of HCF, we start from the last alphabet that is F, factor, common and then highest. So we are moving back side. So when we are having two numbers and we have to find out the HCF of those two numbers what do we do is first of all we look at the factors of those two numbers then we find out the common factor out of that and then we select the highest factor that we have selected as the common one so this is how we find the HCF of a number so let's see uh, the what is the HCF of 8 and 20 so the factors of 8 are 1 2 4 and 8 everybody know that factors listing factors we have already done in the previous tutorial so the factors of 8 are 1 2 4 and 8 now let us see factors of 20 
so factors of 20 are 1 2 4 5 10 and 20 so if you see the common factors of 8 and 20 so you will find 1 is the common factor 2 is the common factor and 4 is the common factor I marked it with the red color now selecting the highest common factor out of 1 2 and 4 so the highest number is 4 here so the highest common factor the HCF of 8 and 20 is 4 methods to find HCF so there are three methods to find HCF first is prime factorization method second is common short division method and third is long division method let us discuss these methods one by one let's start with prime factorization for finding HCF now what do we do here we mark the common factors and multiply right prime factorization we just studied so after the prime factorization we just mark the common factors and we multiply those common factors to find the HCF so the example will make it more clear to you so let's try to find out the HCF of 42 and 70 by prime factorization method so 42 is divisible by the prime number 2 so 2 into 21 is 42 21 is now divisible by the next prime number 3 3 sevens are 21 so here I stop because I got 7 as the quotient and 7 is the prime number similarly you can perform the prime factorization of 70 yourself and now let us try to represent 42 and 70 as the product of its prime numbers prime factors so 42 can be written as 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 7 70 can be written as 2 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 7 so here you can see that I have written 2 with the red color because 2 is the common factor in both 7 is also written in red color because it is also common factor so 2 and 7 are the common factors of 42 and 70 so very first line is the very first line that we discussed is to find the HCF we mark the common factors and multiply so we have marked the common factors with a different color or you can put a circle over it and now we have to multiply so HCF is 2 multiplied by 7 which is 14 so HCF of 42 and 70 is 14 one more thing that you have to be careful about here is that 2 is a common factor so we are not taking 2 2 times we are neither taking 7 2 times nor we are taking 2 2 times why because out of the pair of common factors we take out one number so 2 is the common factor in both and 7 is the common factor in both so we write it only once let us try finding the HCF of three numbers 63 81 and 99 by prime factorization method so you can perform prime factorization of 63 81 and 99 yourself and cross check it with the solution in front of you now let us discuss only the representation of the product of prime factors so 63 can be written as 3 into 3 into 7 81 can be written as 3 into 3 into 3 into 3 99 can be written as 3 into 3 into 11 now let us see which all factors are common in all three so I see 3 common once then again 3 common second time so I marked both with the red color so out of one group we are going to write only one 3 out of the second group we will write the second 3 right so the HCF of 63 81 and 99 is equal to 3 multiplied by 3 that is 9 so we just leave the non-common factors in finding the HCF so finding HCF by prime factorization is uh, again easy but you have to be careful about only the prime factors so you can try out question number one of exercise 5.3 it is based on the same concept that we just discussed next is the common short division method for finding HCF what do we do in common short division method we divide more than a number together by a common prime factor which means that we divide both the numbers together by a common 
प्राइम फैक्टर राइट फॉर एग्जाम्पल फाइंड एच सी एफ ऑफ फोर्टी एट एंड वन हंड्रेड ट्वेल्व बाई कॉमन शॉर्ट डिविजन मेथड सो वी विल राइट फोर्टी एट एंड वन हंड्रेड ट्वेल्व इन अ कम्बाइंड वे यू कैन सी इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू एंड विल बी सेलेक्टिंग वन कॉमन प्राइम फैक्टर विच डिवाइड्स बोथ फोर्टी एट एंड वन हंड्रेड टू सो सच अ कॉमन फैक्टर इज टू राइट टू डिवाइड्स फोर्टी एट ऑल्सो एंड टू डिवाइड्स वन हंड्रेड ट्वेल्व ऑल्सो सो लाइक दिस लाइक यू हैव डन प्राइम फैक्ट्राइजेशन ऑफ इंडिविजुअल नंबर्स सो हियर यू हैव टू डू प्राइम फैक्ट्राइजेशन ऑफ टू नंबर्स इन अ कम्बाइंड मैनर सो ना अगेन इन द सेकेंड स्टेप आई गॉट ट्वेंटी फोर एंड फिफ्टी सिक्स एज दी क्वेश्चन एंड दे आर अगेन डिविजिबल बाई टू सो टू इंटू ट्वेल्व इज ट्वेंटी फोर एंड टू इंटू ट्वेंटी एट इज फिफ्टी सिक्स नाउ द क्वेश्चन आर ट्वेल्व एंड ट्वेंटी एट the third step again they are divisible by 2 so 2 6 are 12 and 2 into 14 is 28 so now the fourth step i got the quotient as 6 and 14 again divisible by 2 2 3 are 6 and 2 7 are 14 so here we stop why because when we reach co prime numbers we have to stop now all of you remember what are co-prime numbers the numbers which have only one as the common factor now 3 and 7 are not divisible by any common prime number so they are co-prime numbers because their highest common factor is 1 so here we stop now what do we do in common short division method how do we write hcf using common short division method we do not take the co-prime numbers while multiplying to get hcf we only write down the prime factors that you have you have got we just ignore the co prime numbers that you get at the last step right so hcf of 48 and 112 is can be written as 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 so we are ignoring 3 and 7 and this gives us 16 as the hcf so this is how we perform common short division method let us try out another example find hcf of 70 80 and 100 by common short division method so uh, we are writing these three numbers together 70 80 and 100 so we are selecting the smallest common prime factor of all three 70 80 and 100 let's start with the prime number 2 and 2 divides 70 also 80 also and 100 also so i got 35 40 and 50 as the quotient when i divide 70 80 and 100 by 2 so 35 40 and 50 so here at this step 40 and 50 are divisible by 2 again but 35 is not divisible by 2 so we cannot select 2 at the second step we have to select any other common prime factor which divides 35 40 and 50 so the next prime number is 3 so let us check whether 3 divides all three numbers or not so 3 neither divides 35 nor 40 nor 50 so we cannot select 3 so the next prime number is 5 which divides all the three numbers right 5 multiplied by 7 is 35 5 multiplied by 8 is 40 And five multiplied by ten is fifty. So I got the quotients as seven, eight, and ten. Now at this step, we have to select another prime factor which divides all three. Or if you are not able to find any such common factor, you can check that any two numbers, if any two numbers are co-prime here out of these three numbers, you can stop here. fine it's it is not mandatory that all three numbers should be co-prime any two number out of these three numbers if they are co-prime then here we end our common short division method so here i got 7 8 and 10 8 and 10 are not co-prime because 8 and 10 are divisible by 2 but yes 7 and 8 are co-prime numbers because they are consecutive numbers we just discussed the properties of co-prime numbers uh, before some time so 7 and 8 are consecutive numbers so they are co-prime numbers so here we stop so hcf of 70 80 and 100 is 2 multiplied by 5 which is 10 so we ignore the co-prime factors so here 
This is how we perform the common short division method for three numbers. So you can try out question number two of exercise 5.3. This is based on the concept of common short division method that we just discussed. Now the last method is long division method for finding HCF. Now where to use the long division method? The long division method is specially useful in finding the HCF of large numbers, right? So when we are dealing with large numbers, we usually perform long division method. It saves our time. Now how to find, how to perform long division method? These follow the steps that are mentioned here. Divide the greater number by the smaller number. So if you are having two numbers, first of all, you have to select the smaller number as the divisor and the greater number as the dividend. So we perform division, but the division that you perform that you performed till now is same like we will do here but it have a multiple division system like you will just see in the further example now step two is write divisor as the dividend and remainder as the divisor so at every next step we get a new dividend and we get a new divisor right the new dividend is the previous divisor and the new remainder uh, and the previous remainder is the new divisor right so it will clear it will clear much clear it will become much clear to you when you will see the example now the third step is repeat till you reach remainder as zero so you have to keep uh, dividing uh, you have to keep uh, repeating the second step again and again till you reach zero till you get remainder as zero so let's uh, see uh, the example quickly to just clear out the concept that we just learnt so here is the example of long division method so let us try finding the hcf of 736 and 1632 so we have large numbers here three digit numbers and four digit numbers so we are selecting long division method for this so the very first step that we discussed is we make divisor and dividend dividend is the greater number and divisor is the smaller number so the divisor is 736 and we will divide 1632 by 736 in a way that you divide always divide right so 736 twoza 1472 so uh, i subtracted it and i got the remainder as 160 just look at the very first division 736 multiplied by 2 so i got 2 as the quotient and 160 as the remainder right so the next step was that remainder becomes a new divisor and the previous divisor becomes a new dividend so here at this step you can see that i have made a new division sign after 160 at the right hand side of 160 so 160 is the previous remainder the first remainder it becomes the divisor we make a new division sign at the place of 160 only at the right hand side of 160 and in the place of dividend we write the previous divisor right and the previous divisor was 736 so i got the new dividend as 736 so at this step again perform the division like you performed in the first step right and just repeat these steps again and again and you are going to find the series of division the steps that you see in front of you like stairs you are seeing in front of you you'll get this division right so let us start with the second step so the divisor is 160 so 160 multiplied by 4 is 640 which is less than 736 now perform the subtraction here so you get 96 right so 96 is the second remainder now you got the remainder here now again you have to make it a new problem 96 is the remainder now it becomes a divisor make a new division sign at the right hand side of 96 and the dividend place is empty write down the previous divisor the previous divisor is 160 so we write down 160 in the place of dividend so here at the third level 160 becomes the dividend and 96 becomes the divisor and so on we perform so 96 ones are 96 now the next remainder is 64 
again we are performing uh, division at this step 64 becomes the new divisor and 96 the previous divisor becomes the new dividend so 96 becomes a new dividend so 64 ones are 64 now perform subtraction here so i got 32 remainder is still not zero so we'll carry on the division again uh, make a new division sign at the right hand side of 32 so 64 becomes a new dividend 32 twos are 64 64 minus 64 is zero now at this step which is this step first second third fourth fifth at fifth step i got remainder as zero so here i stop my long division method now how to recognize the hcf of the numbers the last divisor is the hcf of these two numbers so here in this case the last divisor is 32 so hcf of 736 and 1632 is 32 now let us try to find out hcf of three numbers by long division method so when we have three numbers first of all we arrange them in ascending order and select the first two numbers right select the smallest number as the divisor and the next higher number as the dividend and leave the highest number we will work with that later on so let's start with 408 and 510 in a way that we just performed in the previous example so 408 becomes the divisor 510 becomes the dividend 408 ones are 408 subtract it you will get the remainder as 102 right this is the first remainder so at the right hand side of 102 make a division sign again and write down the previous divisor that is 408 as the dividend so at stage 2 i have 102 as the divisor and 408 as the dividend right so i think it is exactly divisible by 102 if you just uh, try to write down the table of 102 you will get 102 fours are 408 so i get remainder 0 here so we stop here and we got the hcf of two numbers 408 and 510 as 102 right so i got hcf of these two numbers at this step now next is we perform the same long division method with the hcf of first two numbers and the third number that was given in the question so it becomes a new problem new same problem for us 102 becomes the divisor and 1054 becomes the dividend right so perform the division in similar way and stop when you get remainder as 0 so i get the last divisor as 34 so 34 is the hcf of 408 510 and 1054 so this is how you can solve question number 3 of exercise 5.3 now the next topic is lcm that is least common multiple what is LCM? L stands for least, that means minimum. C stands for common and M stands for multiple. Here also we are following the same concept. If you want to find the LCM of two numbers, we first of all look at the multiples of the two numbers. Then we find out the common out of those multiples and then we select the least common multiple right we select the smallest number out of those common numbers so here also we are performing the back procedure first of all looking at the multiples then looking at the common number then selecting the least number out of that this is how you will get the lcm of two numbers or it can be more numbers as well three numbers four numbers so by listing the multiples and finding the lcm this becomes a very uh, you know time consuming task so we'll be talking of the new methods in class 5 so let's look at the different ways in which we can find lcm so there are three ways to find lcm first is by listing multiples that you have already done next is the prime factorization method and third is the common short division method don't get confused with the prime factorization method that you did in hcf 
for finding HCF. Also, common short division method you did for finding HCF, but there is slightly different method that we find that we follow for finding LCM. So let's see these methods one by one. So first is the prime factorization method for finding LCM. Now, how the prime factorization method for finding LCM is different than prime factorization for finding HCF? What did we did? What did we do in finding HCF? We have just taken the common factors, right? We have only taken the common factors and we have ignored the co-prime numbers that you get at the last step. But in finding LCM, we multiply the common factors also and we multiply the non-common factors as well, right? So we'll be just looking at the non-common factors and how to multiply them. Also, we have already discussed this in HCF that you have to take the common factors only once, right? So in LCM also, we will take the common factors only once. Column, right? So uh, just write down three in the rough side because three is there in six and 12 then 2 one more 2 is there in the prime factorization of 12 and 5 is there in the prime factorization of 10 right so we are going to select it only one time so 2 i select 2 then i select 3 then i select 5 right these are the three different numbers which are present in the prime factorization of all three numbers right so the lcm of 6 12 and 10 is 2 which was the common number written with the red color and 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 5 the three factors written with the blue color 2 3 and 5 they are the non-common factors right so multiplying all these numbers you will get 60 as the lcm right you, sh you should write it in the rough co rough column let us try out another example find LCM of 14, 21 and 12 by prime factorization method. So perform the prime factorization of three numbers separately yourself. Now let us see the common factors here in 14, 12, 12 and 21. So if you see, I think none of the number is common. 2 is there in 14 and 12. 3 is there in 12 and 21 and 7 is there in 14 and 21. So there is no common factor which is common in all three. So what we do here we have to select the so there is no common factor. So we will select the non-common factors now. Now in the rough side just write down the non-common factors like you have 2, you have 3 and you have 7 right. Also you can write down the number of times they are occurring right and we have to select the highest number of time for example 2 is there in 14 and 2 is there in 12 also right so 2 is coming one time in 14 and two times in 12 right so we will be selecting the highest number of times we'll be uh, looking at the numbers one by one first of all we are looking at the prime factor 2 right so 2 is occurring one time in 14 and two times in 12 so we are selecting the highest number of times so we'll be selecting two times two so in the lcm write down two multiply by two right now the next number is three we will see the number of times as well three is coming one time in 21 and one time in 12 so both are same one time and one time so we'll only select it one time right now let us look at the last number which is 7 7 is also occurring once in 14 and once in 21 so the highest number is 1 only so we will write 7 one time so the lcm becomes 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 7 which is 84 so you have to be bit more careful when you are writing when you are finding lcm by prime, prime factorization now the next method is common short division method for finding LCM. In common short division method, we divide more than a number together by a common factor. It is same like in we did in HCF. Now how to perform this, this method? For finding LCM of two numbers, what you have to do is start dividing the smallest possible prime number and perform short division till co-prime numbers are left right 
will be solving the example that will become more clear to you and the lcm will be product of prime divisors and the co prime numbers left right so let let us see now how to perform it for three numbers for three or more numbers follow the steps that are here in front of you divide by a prime number which can divide at least two numbers so right so we have to select a prime number which at least divides two numbers step 2 is the number that is not divisible divisible will be written as it is and we have to repeat these steps till co prime numbers are left right so and the lcm will be find out in the same way product of prime divisors and co prime numbers left now let us quickly see the examples to make the concept more clear so find the lcm of 32 and 48 by common short division method so we are here we are having two numbers 32 and 48 the combined uh, common short division method we have already done in hcf so here again what we have to do is we have to select a common prime factor which divides both 32 and 48 so such a common factor common prime factor is 2 so 2 divides 32 also and 48 also so i got quotients as 16 and 24 at the second step they are again divisible by 2 so i get 8 and 12 as the quotient they are again divisible by 2 so i got 4 and 6 as the quotient again divisible by 2 so i got 2 and 3 as the quotient now 2 and 3 are co prime numbers while we are find while we were finding hcf what we did is we ignored these co prime numbers right the leftover co prime numbers were ignored while we were finding hcf but it is not such in the case of lcm we will be selecting these co prime numbers also right so for finding lcm what do we do we select the common prime factors also and the co prime numbers also we do the product of all these numbers to find the lcm so the lcm is 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 and multiplied by 3 so i get 96 as the lcm in this case so let us try finding lcm of three numbers now by common short division method 10 12 and 15 right so we'll be selecting at the very first step we'll be selecting a common prime factor if it divides all three numbers it is very good if it is not dividing so we have to select such a number which divides at least two numbers so 10 and 12 are divisible by 2 so i select 2 at the very first step as the divisor i get quotient as 5 and 6 and i'll write 15 as it is at second step again we have to perform the same we have to follow the same rule we have to select a common prime factor which divides at least two numbers so 6 and 15 at the second step are divisible by 3 so i select 3 and get 2 and 5 as the quotient so quotient is written below the previous dividends and i, I will write 5 as it is because we did not divide 5 by 3 So at the third step, I have three quotients five, two, and five. So here I change my divisor. Five divides both the five, so I select five as the new divisor. Five and the five, two is not divisible by five, so two written written as it is below it, and five and the five. So here I stop. Why? Because I get co prime numbers here. So for finding LCM, what do we do? We find the product of all the common factors also, and co prime numbers also so for finding lcm i multiply them 2 into 3 into 5 into 1 into 2 into 1 so that is 60 so lcm of 10 12 and 15 is 60 so the concept that we just studied can be followed for solving exercise 5.4 of your book i hope the concept is clear to everyone try out all the questions that are given in the pdf solve it in your fair copy and do remaining questions as practice and we will be discussing the doubts in the in in our virtual session thank you